So hi everyone. Today we have a special guest on our channel. We have Rahul with us. So Rahul, would you like to introduce yourself once? Yes. So hi, this is Rahul Bari from uh, like I'm currently working at as a SD one as in Kotak Mahindra Limited. And coming to my background, I am from IIT Bhubaneswar. Graduated as electrical engineer, and my first company was Paytm, and I joined there as backend developer as well. So it's a B fifty, mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. Right, right, right. And we'll be getting to know his journey about how he cracked tech Kotak or you know Kotak Mahindra as a software engineer, his preparation journey, interview experience, and everything in between. So Rahul, would you like to start us off with your interview experience? Like, how did you apply? What all happened in the interviews? Yes. So. Majorly, Kotak Mahindra has a uh, two-way to hiring. Mm -hmm. First is they usually have a they only hire through LinkedIn jobs. They mm -hmm. don't ap apply for you know Kree and Insta hire. Oh, so, okay. So I applied uh, through the job, but I don't mm -hmm. get any success. But but someday one of the Kotak Tech Kotak manager has posted a job. So mm -hmm. therein, I do a email to her to his personal uh -huh. DM, and luckily I got a chance to talk with him, and he said like the overall experience needed and how what mm -hmm. is the like uh, expectation from you, and we mutually both agreed and he uh, like and all the teacher for a basic screening like what are all experience and text that you are working and. How long you are working and basic things. Thereafter, I sit, the interview is scheduled. So it mainly have three technical rounds. Uh -huh. So first of first of all, there will be a, a DSA round that is completely uh -huh. DSA. They will grind you at a, a, like a, from basic to like intermediate advanced level. Uh -huh. And like uh, first, let me. Uh, uh briefly state all the technical interviews then i will go deep down to each one sure yes yeah so first is uh, the technical round that is dsa round and it they ask me a dsa and uh, intermediate questions i will come back to this second mm -hmm. is uh we have a lld round okay. okay and in that lld round you can expect some hld questions also like why you use this what is the purpose of using this uh, again i will come back to it and last was majorly they asked me a simple dsa question and it was and the other part of the interview was completely hld mm -hmm. they they asked what they asked the question that currently they are like in, currently kotak is using mm -hmm. so that is the most difficult part i felt so yes. coming back to the first technical round that it have only uh, one question is from prime numbers mm -hmm. uh, but it is uh, we have to use a complex lo logic that everyone knows uh, sieve of erythronis mm, yes, yes, yes. yeah that is the most optimized one so i use that and the other question was of a graph i completely mm. not remember it but it is a graph question it is a dfs question and hmm. you have to apply a dp algorithm hmm. for a uh, like better time complexity and you have to explain each step uh, like like throughout the interview i you need to she like my interviewer keep on asking why you did it why hmm. uh, that so i got a glimpse that that he is not focusing on the solution rather he is hmm. uh, grinding on the approach thinking. yep so and also uh, last like the dfs question right so the interviewer was not satisfied uh, what i guess uh, with the approach only in the hmm. last 5 minutes he asked me to code it down end to end hmm. like it hmm. should be working so one tip to any everyone who is preparing for ds around please mm -hmm. be very fast with coding your solution hmm. like Yes. you should be like very fast like hmm. you should be very fast in typing and very fast in like error free code because in the last 5 minutes right you have to completely bring your thought in in the code and hmm. it, that is a very difficult part and yes. you have to 
the time crunch in that moment right it will not mm. do like if like what usually do we uh take a lead code question and we write to solve like we have ample of amount yeah. of time <laughs> and <laughs> so so that will not happen so hmm. for that you can stimulate uh, the same thing in contest if you do lead code contest it will give you a glimpse of that hmm. yes and coming to the technical second technical it is a lld round it mm-hmm. he basically asked me to write uh, to design a application that is similar to book my show mm-hmm. and the the by giving so much interviews i come to know that you have to before fourth ask the interviewer what is the lld round purpose is it a mm-hmm. machine coding round or it is a lld round so there is a fine thin line between that so yes. usually uh, what happens is um, you you think that is a lld round and you start uh, the class diagram and start explaining things and you have very less time to mm. completely end to end right and cool, yes. the and the interviewer expect you to completely write end to end because he mm. is thinking that it's a machine coding round mm. so that thing you have to clear beforehand is it a machine coding round or it is or is it is a lld round so for mm. me it is a lld round so i don't have to write code end to end i just need to highlight the class and explain the functionality and so coming to the last lld and ha huh, yeah so he i asked you can put a database here hmm. so he tell me which kind of database is perfect for here hmm. and he also given me additional scenario where i have to use a cust- like he give a scenario of these conditions hmm. and ask me what kind of database is most suitable for that condition so yeah. so we have to you have to very clear about uh, the lld concept used in hld sorry lld hld mm. concept used in lld so yes. other way around and the last is the most difficult one that is the mm. hld round and he asks me what is api gateway and what is microservices what is uh, like he asked me whether i have worked in securities because as a like my ex company was paytm so mm. it's a paytm payment bank to be precise so yeah he, so they expect me to learn at least some basic security stuffs and as i am joining in kotak so it's a bank basically fintech company so so the level of security grows as we are mm. as you are working in a fintech company yes so the preparation should be revolve around the type of company you are applying for my view because mm. if you are com- applying for a printing company you will you will be more grilled upon security and other stuffs code quality mm. and security yes. majorly mm. so they ask me do you know do you know jwt jwt auth difference between asymmetric and symmetric encryption have you ever used it in ptm and this kind of stuffs so some of i am able to answer like jwt auth symmetric and asymmetric and there are other high level security questions that i am unable to answer but mm-hmm. luckily i got past there mm. yeah nice nice so you had basically uh, these three rounds you know the dsa and the lld all right so i don't have any follow up questions because you explained everything very well the questions and all but uh, you know i do want to know about your preparation strategy because like you said the dsa was around medium to hard level and they also went deep dived into lld and hld and you know a company like kotak mind right pays well it is a you know fintech fintech company a sort of a product based company so it must take a good amount of knowledge to crack it so what was your preparation strategy or preparation journey like for you know going cracking this yeah so for dsa okay hmm. so before applying to kotak i got a job like chance to interview with google Hmm. so oh, nice yes so therein i grilled a lot of dsa questions i have solved around 900 plus questions in lead code hmm. nice like nice by that time okay and one thing i want to tell every student and all uh, like as you all already aware of the current market that hmm. everyone is uh, trying to sell courses and all 
okay so <laughs> so 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 that thing is you like if you observe closely like they itself don't need any courses so mm. best way to learn dsa is to go old school that is learn learn the patterns what are the exact mm. patterns how the questions fall into each categories mm. create a brain map like uh, if this questions comes what what are how you exactly get up to the solution and mm. by doing as much questions you are able to then the map will be created inside your of your mind you don't have mm. to follow a road map or something you yes. just have to pick a standard 800 questions solve it create a map on your own and put uh, like try to put it in some notes format or something and uh, like whenever you mm. feel like uh, you are lacking it just go through this question it will more than enough and one more thing mm. if you want like the dsa i said right the time crunch is more important in the interviews real interviews yes. so for that to stimulate that you can use the uh, like you can do lead code contest like mm. like in weekends yes so i think that is a, a very important thing i think that you said right unless you go on contest on lead code right you'll not experience the same amount of that time crunch like you said that you'll feel in an interview generally we open lead code and then you know you just relax aram se bed pe late ke chill kar ke lead code karte hain so you won't feel that nervousness but you will feel that in lead code contest i think like you said weekend pe it comes in morning right so definitely i suggest mm-hmm. everyone to uh, give lead code contest and 900 plus problems is amazing in dsa you know i think if someone goes above 500 plus good quality of problems mm-hmm. and they get a good knowledge of dsa hai na even i mentioned 200 is more than enough if you choose uh, quality questions but choosing is also an art you <laughs> don't know which question is helpful uh, and which is repetitive yeah. uh, that is true but you know i my opinion is a bit different from others you know a lot of people i know a lot of people say that you don't need to solve a lot of problems but what i suggest is the more you practice the better and uh, the more you practice somewhere in your mind it will get fed you know that pattern recognition ability your mind will develop sooner or later right so more problems you'll solve it's better uh, what about system design any pointers you'd like to give about system design how you prepared for it yes so there is maybe many posts that i already mentioned this channel concept and coding there is a channel mm, okay. shyansh yes yeah shyansh so it's have a good playlist of lld and hld so first like you, if you are able to complete end to end that's good and lld i would suggest a book that is a uh, head first design pattern mm, yes i heard really. it yes yes yeah it's a it's a really i have an ipad so i i usually uh, go through the pdf it is a like if you go through the book right end to end so mm. it is a really nice book for lld mm. and uh, like there is a a thing that you we student and even experienced uh, people always miss is the code quality and mm. uh, the code quality and code naming convention and how how to structure the code and even if your logic is right that but you the way of preparing mm. the way of presentation yes. like affects a lot like a lot mm. so you should majorly focus like if, after your logic gets complete like you will find many students uh, writing the same logic the logics are mm. like defined but the way you present to the interviewer the way you write the code mm. the way Makes you format the code that really matters hmm it's very true that's very true you know if everyone is solving the problem then obviously they'll pick the one who solved it the best way who coded it the best way hana so definitely that is also one advice that i would like to reiterate whenever you're coding make sure that you code it the right way make sure that there's no bugs in the end make sure you don't mess up the variable name make sure you don't keep anything useless that is also very important right yeah hmm and apart from that the resources that rahul has mentioned we'll uh, put it in the description box and i'll also put his linkedin in the description box so you can follow him from there and connect with him from there as well so make sure that you check out the description box okay so i think we have covered pretty much everything about you know kotak mahindra's uh, interview experience and rahul's journey so on a final note any advice you'd like to give for all the job seekers who are watching this video the freshers you know who are out of college and want to crack a good company like kotak mahindra what advice would you like to give them 
I if I summarize, I can put all those in two points. Hmm. First is yeah, uh, like if you obs- uh, heard of a site called Medium, yeah. Medium Blocks. Yes. So it is not quite uh, not yet known to anyone. Like if, not everyone. Hmm. Uh, it is very underrated as of now. So nobody yes, it is. really talks about. Uh, majorly, everyone knows about Stack Overflow and all. But mm-hmm. one thing I want to point out: like Stack Overflow is for finding a solution, and Medium is to create the solution. Like mm-hmm. is to create the solution by own. So first thing is first all the experienced job holders, please read one Medium block at least once. Like at least once one Medium block block daily. Mm-hmm. That gives you a like enrich of knowledge every day. And yeah. So and the second point I want to discuss is so there will be task that you don't know in a company mm. and there there are tutorials you have to follow so there will always be exist a gap between your learning and implementing okay mm. so you, the more you saw a tutorial okay you will the more you feel frustrated that you are not able to build so that thing happens to me so hmm. even if i watch a tutorial completely end to end still i don't able to build something so uh, instead of learning and building start the approach by building and learning like you jump hmm. on building in the process of building you will got to learn things many things and, yes and that learning is like more like and also you don't have motivation to build okay so so let's say you got a unknown task that you don't mm. know the tech stack and all if in your company pick that task okay that will give you push because you have sprint deadlines and all and start building and learning that will give mm. you the most the amount of learning you have in 15 days sprint will be a way more than a tutorial so that's mm. your personal hmm now that is that is very true you know the amount of learnings you will have by building something yourself is like 10 times the learning you will get from a course or a tutorial by just watching it right with every moment you'll get stuck on something then you'll google it you'll search for solution and it's best if you document it along the way you know yeah. note making and documenting is something that we should absolutely do as programmers right yeah whether yeah. we do even even it works for resume if you hmm. prepare a long resume in your job like experience okay you like whatever you were build so that document will work uh-huh. as a Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, can, yeah, yeah. you well, are saying something. I cut you in between. Sorry. No, no, yeah. no. But I totally agree with what you said. It will help you in filling up your resume. Also, a lot of times people work for two years, three years, and then you know they forget everything that they worked. But if you document mm-hmm. everything that you worked on, if you document the solutions, then definitely you know it is something yeah. that you can help. So that's the that's the main point I was putting across. You know, the documenting will help in both not just development. It will help in DSA also. I said just note making for DS also. You know, when you learn a new algorithm, you learn a new pattern. Definitely, you should make notes. Digital, handwritten, anything is fine, right? Yes. Huh. Okay. So I think that's some wonderful advice right there that you know you can follow directly from Rahul. So I think that covers pretty much everything about Rahul's journey and the interview experience. So thanks a lot, Rahul, for coming on my channel, sharing your journey with me and my subscribers. I hope it will help a lot of students. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Asis. Thank you for this.